All right, I'm Judson Powell. This is the fastest 15 minutes on politics and religion. That's all I really talk about. I don't talk about a lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, I want to talk about something that I think that everybody is overlooking, and that is the uh, Electoral College. And I think that the Electoral College is very, very important to the upcoming election. And I think that we need to have something done to eliminate it before the next election. First of all, it's outdated. It's not needed anymore. I mean, for the most part, uh, it was a it was a system that was set up because back in the day, uh, they didn't want any foreign people coming over and taking over the election. Well, and a, a lot of good that did because it appears that Trump did that anyway uh, through Russia. But you know, nobody ever really challenged him on it or you know made him go to like congressional hearings or anything like that so he just keeps saying that there was no collusion there was no collusion but the electoral college was set up because there was no clear way to be able to really spread and disseminate information across the country so they set up they set up the electoral college because they were afraid that people would vote but they wouldn't have any idea of who the candidates are or what the issues were or anything like that. So they set up the Electoral College because of that situation. But here's the problem. The problem is, is that now we got, I mean, literally I got, right? <laughs> I got I got the news right in the palm of my hand. Anybody who has a smartphone, basically what? They got, you know, they got news and information right there. I can literally research anything, any candidate, anything that I want to research, I can pretty much do it online. So we don't need that system anymore. So what needs to be done, and especially the Democrats, first of all, we know that the the elections, the last two elections were stolen by, you know, were stolen by the Republicans, or, or I shouldn't say the last two, but we know that Trump did not win the popular vote. He won the electoral college vote, so he did. In fact, depending on what estimates you look at, between three and four million people voted for Hillary that did not vote for Trump. She so she beat him, you know, rather handily. Three three to four million votes. That's a lot of votes. Okay, and then we had the whole Al Gore, uh, baby Bush situation with the whole hanging chads and all of that kind of stuff. We'll see all of that. And then we, so we had electoral college involved in that. And then of course we had the Supreme court who made the final decision and you know, whatever, whatever. But the bottom line is the person that the people wanted to be president, you know, who was Al Gore didn't end up being president. Okay. And then the only time that, that we really, you know, won a clear victory was with Barack Obama. And that's, and I'm, I shouldn't really say we, but I just say the Democrats. So, so then, and then even after Bush, baby Bush won, then he got reelected a second time. So we know that the electoral college system at this point in history is very, very, you know, is very, very controversial. And so in my opinion, in my humble opinion, we need to get rid of the electoral college and we need to do it before this next election because we got, we got to make sure <laughs> we got to make sure, you know, that, that Trump is out of there and and it and is no longer, you know, in fact, I don't even mind, you know, and I hate to say this, but I don't even remind, even mind if it was a, a Republican that got in office again, but just not Bush. I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is Bush is like really making the country bad. And I, I read an article today where it was talking about that Bush actually doesn't believe that as many people dislike him as actually do dislike him. And a lot of people dislike him, including Republicans. And what he's doing right now, this whole thing with uh, locking away kids and concentration camps and, and splitting up families and all of that, that's, a, that's, a, that's ugliness from the past. And we, we really don't need that now. I mean, this is, this is 2019, and now we're running uh, you know World War I and World War II uh, tactics over things that are going on now, and that's not cool, all right? I mean, the the, the, the entire country, um, you know, has changed, and we need to we need to reflect that in the leader that we elect, and and I know everybody was like, well, I don't want to vote for Hillary and this that and the other thing, but the bottom line was she did win, 
So, you know, that's, that's, that's neither here nor there because what? When they went to the Electoral College, then because, and see, the whole thing is nobody really knows how the, how the system is rigged or how it's set up. Nobody really has any clue of how that works. Nobody. You know, okay, so, so you know, because you got this state is worth more than that state, is weighted more than this state, and this state is weighted more than that state. And we know that gerrymandering and voter tampering and all this kind of stuff, it goes on. So we don't really know. So what we should do is we should just go to old school. One man, one vote, or I should say one woman, one vote. One man, one woman, one vote. And that's how, that's how it should be. I mean... And, and there are enough people who are intelligent enough who, who look at politics, who watch television, who read uh, magazines and newspapers, that they have a full awareness of what's going on in these elections nowadays. It's not like it was in the 17 or 1800s and, and, no, and only the elite had information and there were only two or three printing presses in the entire country and all that kind of stuff. That, that doesn't exist anymore. People, you know, news and information is, is, is rampant in our society. You can get news and information from, from literally hundreds of sources. So including people's, you know, including the people that are just out on the street filming stuff, you know, on their cell phones and stuff like that. Half of the news now comes in from that, from that kind of angle. So we know what's going on and we know the candidates and everybody, you know, people watch the debates. People have a chance, you know. Back in the, back when these when the electoral college was created, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have a way to nationally, you know, be able to expose all the candidates. And in fact, history, you know, history is being changed because of technology. And the other thing, and then one other thing that needs to be done before the next election, and that is there needs to be a clear cut system put in place about voting voting machines, what is acceptable, what is not. And I don't think, you know, and, and, and what happens is all the time, Congress keeps telling us, oh, this is a state's rights issue and the state is responsible for how it holds its election. But when we're talking about a national election, I don't necessarily know if that should be true. I think that there should be a system put in place that is, you know, just like they have a system for collecting taxes and they have a system for you know, for for uh, any time you owe something to the government, there's a system for that. So why isn't there a nationwide voting system? You know, and there should be something that can't be uh, hacked or tampered with or, you know, or something that's not and should not be handled by some private company or some private institution. It needs to be something that actually is employed by the government and I believe the same thing should be true with the census because we also got to realize we have that coming up and people don't realize how important the census is the census is important because it determines where those districts are how many votes you're going to have all that kind of stuff so when so when you get into that that's and that's where the whole thing about gerrymandering comes in so we have gerrymandering we have people redrawing districts and doing all kinds of stuff so that so that they can have more votes in in, in congress or you know or they can uh they can change up you know districts uh to make one district smaller and another district larger and basically all that kind of stuff in order to what in order to sway uh you know the vote to make to make you know it easier to get their candidates elected and we saw what happened in georgia and uh, you know, and we saw what happened in Maryland, and how people were being denied, and they were still finding they were still finding absentee ballots and all kind of stuff even after the election was over, and you know, and and, and the election had been basically you know um, had been uh, over and done with. So we got to make sure that these type of things don't happen again. And see, and the thing about it is, it's got to be up to the Democrats because the Republicans, they're the ones that are pushing the agenda for gerrymandering, for voter tampering, for all of that stuff to occur. They're the ones that are making that happen. Why? Because they understand. As a matter of fact, that's the whole reason why Trump is deporting all these people and everything like that. He's, I mean, he's even deporting people who have served in the in the military and the reason why they're doing that is because they realize that they don't have or or they're losing numbers and and the fact that they're losing numbers 
is making them what? Is making them do take steps so that they can keep power and control in the in the Congress and in the Senate, okay? And to keep those governor seats uh, that they already have. And it, and it's becoming increasingly more and more difficult, especially as uh, quote unquote minorities are starting to get into the political process. And that's and, and I guess that'll be the final thing I'll talk about is that I know there's some people out here that are like talking about, oh, well, you know, don't vote. It ain't going to do you no good. But that's not really I don't really think that's true. I think is I don't think it's the, the savior. I don't think it's our savior in the picture, but I believe it's one aspect of the picture. You know, I don't think that it's the it's the whole picture, but I believe and it might not be the hugest part of the of the, of the picture, but it is an important piece of the picture. And I, I can talk about that probably on another video, uh, because if you really realize uh, when 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 Latinos and African Americans, so-called Latinos and so-called African Americans, I don't want to insult anybody, but when we vote, most of the time we don't lose. The only time we lose is when we are apathetic. Just like that's basically, and, and that's basically one. Uh, element of what made Hillary lose is because we saw that black people did not vote and they didn't vote and they didn't vote in huge numbers but when but when Obama ran two times they voted and they voted in huge numbers everybody turned out and voted and it was I guess because you know we liked the candidate but we gotta we gotta get out of that too it's not about liking the candidate and I see a lot of people pushing right now talking about hey vote blue you know, who no matter who they put before us, who their nominee is, vote blue. Well, that's that's all well and fine, but you know, by the same token, we also got to take some other measures to make sure that that vote is not wasted. It's to make sure that all the voter tampering, the gerrymandering, uh, the electoral college, those things right now are the most detrimental things to any type of. Uh, victory, especially for the Democratic Party. And I'll just throw this in too, uh, because I, I made a post about this on Facebook today, but I'm just trying to say, look, Democrats do something. A friend of mine, you know, they said this thing, talk about how they how they just now, you know, how they just now filed a lawsuit against, against Trump to make him expose and, you know, show his taxes. And the other, so, so the, the final thing that's really making it difficult, even if they try to win uh, and one of the things that's making it extremely difficult for them to win the next election is the fact that they don't fight. They're not fighting hard enough. You know, they should have they should have already started impeachment proceedings against against uh, Trump. If there's no reason that why they haven't. And I even believe if they would have done it, that a lot of Republicans would have crossed the aisle and would have got him out of there, too, because there's a lot of Republicans that don't like him either. And I'm not saying, and and the only the only downfall to that is Pence. <laughs> you know, he's not exactly the best character in the world either. But you know, but at least I think he might, you know, be a little bit better, um, you know, diplomatically and maybe uh, even when it comes to certain policies. I don't think he'll go quite as far because because we we see that Trump is narcissistic, and so he takes everything that happens. He takes everything that happens very personally, so he he's not he's not running it like a country. He's running it like well, when you do something, you're doing it to me, and and that's not really how you can really do things, because there's so many different issues, so many different constituencies, so much stuff that's going on that you really do have to take this stuff one day at a time, and one issue and one problem at a time. So here we go, because I've got to go. But look, get rid of the electoral college, take measures to make the voting system equal, take measures to stop gerrymandering, and take, uh, and take measures to make sure that people cannot tamper with the vote or tamper with the machines. Those are the things that need to be done so that anybody has a chance and so that, and so that really, so that it's a fair system and that it's a just system and that everybody in that system has the opportunity to thrive and, and to win, you know, on a level playing field. Because the way it is now, 
It's just not right. Anyway, I love you all. Gotta go. That's the fastest 15 minutes in politics and religion.